Alright, time for another UFO news roundup. So get in here, this is Jack with Cosmic Road. I talk about UFOs and the paranormal. Please hit like, please subscribe, share on social media, and let me know what you think in the comments below. Okay, and again, if I seem a little low energy uh, today, uh, just like yesterday, it's day two of the dieta for me. I'm gearing up for another ayahuasca retreat next weekend, and that means no caffeine for Jack and uh, also know a bunch of other stuff uh, like good food <laughs> and uh, uh, well you know I should say I'm eating healthier now I'm eating healthier but it also doesn't give me quite as much energy as, as all that good fatty stuff that I like a lot of red meat and stuff ah, can't have that so, uh, but anyway, um, but I think mostly it's just the caffeine. Anyway, moving on. Uh, so to start with, there's a little David Grush news. Uh, Compass Rose attorneys formally end association with UAP whistleblower David Grush. Attorneys from Compass Rose Legal Group, who represented whistleblower David Grush in his complaint to the Intelligence Community Inspector General uh, regarding harassment, he says he received during the investigation of a supposed uh, UAP crash retrieval program within the Department of Defense have issued a statement saying that they have ended their formal association with the former intelligence officer. The, this move comes just four days after Grush revealed to the public the supposed existence of what he described as a crash retrieval program designed to collect and reverse engineer craft of non-human origin dating back at least 90 years. And it goes on. It doesn't give me a very clear picture of why they... Uh, uh, you know, uh, into their association with David Grush? Is it because his uh, claims were too outrageous? Um, was there some other reason? Is it because he had, you know, or they, they had possibly concluded whatever they were doing for him? Uh, yeah, so I don't know. You can read this article. I'll link to it. Uh, but I didn't really get a, a great idea of why they did that. Notably, the sentence highlighting the fact that the whistleblower disclosure did not speak to the specifics of the alleged uh, class, classified information is the only part of the statement in italics. Um, yeah, uh, yeah he, he didn't speak to the specifics of the uh, information. So maybe when they saw the specifics of the information, they said, this is too crazy for us and we're ditching this guy. I, I think that's probably what happened, but we don't have any uh, corroboration on that. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know. In other David Grush news, it looks like he is going to speak to the House of Representatives, representatives, and he is going to testify before them. And But that may be uh, in September. We may have to wait a little bit for that. So, you know, uh, hang on. Uh, uh, yeah, hang in there. But we are going to get David Grush testifying in open court. Uh, you know, I hope he has good protection. I hope he's taking care of himself. You know, um, you know, meanwhile, of course, uh, the powers that be are, are hiding the bodies, literally, and, you know, moving the UFOs. So, you know, it is what it is. But, uh, yeah, and Tim Burchett, he has some uh, words for us. Um, this is breaking news. This is an article released on June 10th, which is today. Yeah, we are not alone. Well, let's just go. A congressman has said the world is being lied to about UFOs as he called for the full disclosure of what the U.S. really knows about the phenomena. Uh, Representative Tim Burchett, a longtime advocate for disclosure, said sensational claims by a new Pentagon whistleblower are just the tip of the iceberg. Okay, does that mean uh, he's talking about more whistleblowers coming forward? Or is he talking about there's more to all of this than a reverse engineering program? I, I would love to know what he knows or what he, he believes. Uh, yeah, uh, let's see. Congress has been lied to and the public have been lied to, Burchett told The Sun Online. But we got to have that one person who walks out with a tape or something. I would tell any whistleblowers to come out. Your country needs you. Now, of course, you know, if a whistleblower came out and violated his NDA, he would have, you know, legal repercussions. And of course, there may be other repercussions as well. 
So, you know, it's easy to say, you know, tell a whistleblower to come forward, you know, when you're not the one paying the price for coming forward. So uh, I understand the reticence and that's why we need strong whistleblower protection. And we need to enforce the whistleblower protection that we do have. But that's why people are coming, you know, as part, part of the reason why people are coming to Tim Burchett in the House of Representatives instead of Arrow or uh, the Senate, because those guys have shown their true colors and, and they cannot be trusted. But uh, Tim Burchett in the House, uh, or at least elements of the House, may yet be trustworthy in all of this and true pro-disclosure advocates, as at least Tim Burchett seems to be. So maybe he's encouraging whistleblowers to come straight to him into the house, circumventing Sean Kirkpatrick and Arrow. In other news, we have uh, an exclusive from the Daily Mail in the UK. A Marine vet breaks 14 years silence to make astonishing, cl astonishing claim that his six-man unit saw a hovering octagonal UFO being loaded with weapons by unmarked U.S. forces who threatened them at gunpoint while serving in Indonesia in 2009. What? What? Uh, a former Marine claims he and five comrades saw a flying saucer being loaded with weapons while serving in Indonesia. Uh, the wild story comes after an Air Force whistleblower from the government's UFO office joined growing numbers of intelligence officials claiming the U.S. has recovered and is even reverse engineering crashed or landed non-human spacecraft. Michael Herrera was a 20-year-old rifleman sent on a Navy humanitarian mission during the 2009 Sumatra earthquake and tsunami that devastated the region. Uh, in an exclusive interview with Daily Mail, he claims that while guarding an airdrop of aid supplies outside the city of Padang in October that year, his six-man unit stumbled across a hovering octagonal craft in apparent use by clandestine U.S. forces. Yeah, and that's him. Former Marine Michael Herrera tells DailyMail.com that he saw a UFO being loaded with weapons. Uh, that's crazy. What? And is that supposed to be a representation of the craft you saw? That's interesting looking. All right, is it flying? Is a flying saucer, but it's also got facets to it and a little pyramid on shot on top. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, the craft was rotating in a clockwise motion while changing colors. It had an audible hum to it, like the sound of a transformer or a guitar AMP. 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 It, it was an octagonal shape with a pyramid at the top uh, that was black. After 14 years of silence, Herrera was emboldened by new UFO whistleblower protections and in April testified under oath to the government's UFO investigation team, the Arrow, as well as a Senate committee. He provided his unblemished uh, four-year service record and texts about the incident with an alleged fellow witness who refused to talk, saying it was not worth my life or jeopardizing my family. Now, I mean, that's understandable, and that's what I'm talking about, but it, I really applaud Herrera for coming out like this. That takes a lot of guts. Uh, peripheral acts of his account were verified by Daily Mail using military sources, but Herrera 33 does not have documentation or photos of the incident itself. Well, that would be nice, right? That would be nice. That, of course, you know, if they do get photos, you know, it's going to be hidden. Uh, you know, uh, apparently David Grush provided proof to Congress. They have not released that proof to us, have they? And they can scrub out the parts they need to scrub out and, uh, you know, the national security parts and keep the rest and, and give us the goods. And we have other reports in the Las Vegas case of the FBI maybe stepping in and uh, making the police scrub or delete their own body cam footage that may have included actual footage of the being uh, or one of the one or more of the beings. And of course, that still has not been corroborated, so I don't want to jump on that too high. But uh, but that is the sort of things they do. So even if you get footage, are they going to be able to release it? That. Uh, the Denver native joined the Marines. Anyway, so that's his story. Uh, uh, yeah, so weapons being a, uh, uh, taken aboard a UFO. Does that mean 
it was one of ours or one of theirs or was it a mixed one like in the terry loveless case so uh yeah what's the story there is that one of our craft is that an arv um you know i i've made several videos about uh the evidence that we seem to have been flying our own ufos for well at least since the 60s so you know that seems to be you know when when that began and john keel was reporting on this back at the time and you know there have been uh, other evidence that has come out since then so you know that's that's what i believe is probably the case is that we have our own ufos uh, and there is evidence to suggest that the beings helped us in that very directly uh, not just uh, you know left us some ufos to reverse engineer but actually directly helped us and work with us on that um, you know what the, what is the purpose i don't know i don't know uh, and there is more interesting news also from the dailymail.com crashed ufo recovered by the u.s military distorted space and time leaving one investigator nauseous and disoriented when he went in and discovered it was much larger inside than out all of the tardis i don't know if you're a doctor who fan i'm a doctor who fan and i'm long familiar with bigger on the inside right uh but uh, the fact that this could be real and then again, talking about Terry Loveless, this is uh, something we see in the Terry Loveless case, as well as others. Uh, but his is the most well-known and the most, uh, you know, uh, vetted, I guess. Uh, so, you know, uh, Lou Elizondo himself has vetted the Terry Loveless story where he went aboard a giant UFO, uh, you know, and it was, I, like, I think it was, he said it was like a football field on the inside, on the, uh, yeah, on the outside, but it was this massive, massive thing on, on the uh, uh, outside, something. Anyway, I'm getting that mixed up a little bit, but it was much, much bigger on the inside. And by the way, there were 50 US, U.S. servicemen that were aboard that UFO working with the many beings that were there. And uh, so this, uh, and yeah, and this is, is not just coming from the Daily Mail from an anonymous source. This is Danny Sheehan. Uh, who is bringing some of this information to us. A crashed UFO recovered by the U.S. military distorted space-time and was bigger on the inside claims a top attorney involved in bringing UFO whistleblowers to Congress. Danny Sheehan said, and you know, that's Lou, Lou Elizondo's lawyer, uh, you know, and he's, he's, he's been in the game for a while. Uh, he says he was told the mind-boggling tale by a whistleblower who allegedly took part in an illegally undisclosed program retrieving crashed non-human spacecraft and who has now briefed a Senate Intelligence Committee staff. The lawyer's story is the latest in a series of stunning claims this week of UFOs in the government's hands, which began on Monday with an on-camera interview of David Grush. Uh, yeah, let's see. Yeah, and of course, meanwhile, the Department of Defense says it has not discovered any verifiable information to support any of the claims. Of course. Uh, but Sheehan has been developing or has helping bring whistleblowers like Grush to Congress in an attempt to expose what he believes is a government cover-up. You go, Danny. You go, Danny. I love it. I love it. But uh, yeah, here we go. Is there more information? Yeah. Uh, the attorney told Daily Mail that one alleged recovery recounted to him by a supposed crash retrieval program insider involved a 30-foot saucer partially embedded in the earth with some fantastical properties. They tried to hook a bulldozer to it to pull it out, and it pulled out a shape like a pie slice, almost like it was part of the way it was constructed. When it came loose a couple feet, they stopped immediately. They didn't want to destroy the integrity of the machine. They had a guy go into it. He, he got in there and it was a, as big as a football stadium. It was freaking him out and started making him feel nauseous. He was so disoriented because it was so gigantic inside. Now, was he nauseous just because it was crazy? or because there's some property inside that caused him to feel nauseous because this is something you see in many experiencer accounts when they see the beings so they'll have maybe they have a bad smell or, or something else or they'll be taken aboard the ships and they'll go through dimensions or whatever and they'll get nauseous 
So, um, yeah, he staggered back out after being in there a couple of minutes. And outside, it was four hours later. There was all kinds of time, distor time distortion and space distortion. Uh, physicists have theorized that propulsion of an advanced craft could theoretically involve warping space-time around it to negate the effects of gravity. But she had declined to give further details. Anyway, so this gives us an insight into what other whistleblowers might be coming forward. Apparently, some of these people have testified to Congress about that. So they are genuine whistleblowers. And, uh, you know, we have been hearing in the last couple of days that there are more whistleblowers to come. The David Grush is just the first of possibly three or four that are going to come forward with amazing information. And if this is one of them, that's just mind-blowing. I mean, bigger on the inside than the outside, distorted space and time. This is crazy. This is crazy. But of course, you know, this is what you get, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, you know... Uh, uh, Mick West w w was harping on all of this, of course. He, he snarkily says, Well, this explains it perfectly. The crashed UFO that was the size of a football field was only that big on the inside, like the TARDIS. On the outside, it was only 30 feet, so they could transport it to Wright-Patterson on a flatbed truck. And he's saying this all very snarkily. Uh, but my comment to him was, Welcome to non-human science. <laughs> Welcome to non-human science. I should have said Mick at the end of that. Welcome to non-human science, Mick. Uh, so, uh, you know, that that's my take on that. Uh, that you, you can't try to understand this according to our, our understanding of physics, which is why I was so annoyed by the paper Sean Kirkpatrick wrote with Avi Loeb when they said we had to study the phenomenon um, through the lens of uh, human-understood conventional physics. When, you know... Okay, that's 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 a fine idea. It's it's not going to get us anywhere. So yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, at least in understanding the width and breadth of the phenomenon, clearly we need to understand the science if we're going to understand any of this, and we need to build on what we know and add to it. Clearly, if they're flying around in their own UFOs, you know, as in uh, this story, then. Uh, we understand, some people understand some of this. So anyway, that's my take on it, guys. Let me know what you think about these crazy stories in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. I sure would appreciate it. Smash the subscribe button and the bell to be notified of future videos. You don't want to miss a thing. Join me on social media. There's Facebook and Twitter links below. I would love to see you guys there. And if you could share this video, that'd be really cool. And there are plenty of other videos for you to check out on the channel. And I'll see you next time. This is Jack with Cosmic Road, signing out.